Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Revivalist broadcast originating from River of Life Church in Pekin, Illinois of the United States of America. We come to you today with a vision burning within us to proclaim the whole counsel of God and the full power of the Holy Spirit. And as we begin, I wanted to share one thing with you, that if you have any prayer requests, any, any concerns that you'd like, we have intercessors here, we have intercessory prayer groups. And simply send your needs in to us. We'll be glad to pray over them. We'll believe God for a miracle in your life. Send them into our email address, which is the revivalist1234 at yahoo.com. Let me repeat that. It's the revivalist1234 at yahoo.com. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. If you're hungry in your heart for a revival, then I believe we've got a word for you today. There's just a hunger in my heart today for a revival, a hunger in my heart for a move of the Holy Spirit, a hunger in my heart for the glory of God in my life, in the church where I pastor, the community where I'm at, in your heart, and in your community, your church, wherever you might be, listen to this broadcast. I'm praying today that the fire of God will touch your heart, the fire of God will touch your life, and just spread revival throughout this, this planet in these last days that we'll see the manifestation of the glory of God in the lives of believers, the manifestation of the glory of God in, in homes, in churches, in the streets, in the highways, in the hedges. And that's what I'm calling out to God for and believing God for in these last days is such a move as that. I know we've been teaching it each and every broadcast in John chapter 15, and that's what we're going to continue to do. Look at John 15 in the context of revival. And uh, we spoke a little bit last broadcast about abiding in Christ and that abiding relationship, that intimate relationship with the Lord. And today I want to talk about the big word, if. And uh, in John chapter 15, verse 7, it says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. And so that's talking about our prayer life. It's saying if we do the ifs, then our prayer life is going to be mighty. If we do the ifs, then our prayer life is going to be powerful. And so I'm going to talk today about if. If, if, if. That one big word, if. I like to give you an illustration and imagine that I, I went out to a bank, a local bank, and I put $10,000 in that bank, and I gave you all the information. I said, if you go into this bank tomorrow and you take them this information, they're going to give $10,000 to you. And so I gave all that information. I went out put the $10,000 in the bank, and, and then I see you the next day, and you just start yelling and screaming at me. You promised me $10,000, and I don't have a penny to my name. And I said, well, what, what are you talking about? Did you go to the bank? Did you talk to them? I said, well, no, I didn't do that yet, but you told me I'd have $10,000. What's lacking in that, in that situation? You didn't do the if. The if was going to the bank and withdrawing the money. And if you don't do the if, then you're not going to receive the reward. And that's the way it is in the things of God. The Bible is full of scriptures and full of verses that has that key word, if. If, if, if. if. I was speaking to a, another pastor a while back, and we were discussing the spiritual gifts, and he was kind of sharing, you know, I don't know why we're not seeing that in our church more, and why we're not seeing the, that movement in, in, in the fellowship where I'm pastoring, and why God's not moving in that capacity. And, and he says, why is that you think it is? Why are we not seeing a greater move of God in that area? I said, you know, it, it's simple. The Bible has some ifs there when it comes to the spiritual gifts. You see, this, it tells us that we're to covet the best gifts. It tells us that we're to be zealous of the gifts and seek to excel in the gifts. We're to covet to prophesy. So if in our hearts we're not desirous of that, if our hearts are not coveting the moving of the Holy Spirit, if our hearts not desiring the gifts of the Spirit to be manifest, if you and I are not zealous about the things of God and about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, then we're not going to see a manifestation of that. And as I was just thinking about that, and, and, and the other day I was meditating, on that conversation and, and, and looking at the verses that I was going to share with here in this uh, broadcast this morning, I began to think about something. You see, I think that if we don't truly have our heart in the right place, we're not going to see the manifestation of the gifts. You see, I think it's not that we just have to covet them. It's not that we have to just desire them. Not that we just have to be zealous of them. But our heart has to truly be in that right place to see the gifts manifest the way we want to see. And this is something I saw God on a lot and, and, and required of the Lord a lot. You see, it's the state of our heart 
It's very important when it comes to the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The state of our heart is very important when it comes to the manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let me take just a moment to explain to you what I'm talking about. You know, you remember Jesus, when Jesus, when he was looking at Jerusalem, it's referred to as saying he wept over Jerusalem. When he was looking at Jerusalem after they had basically rejected him toward the, the end of his ministry, when he knew it was about time and he was going to go upon the cross. And about that time, he was looking over Jerusalem and he began to weep and he, and he began to cry and he said, you know, so many times I, I wish I could have brought you underneath my wings like a hen does her chicks, but you would not. And I thought, that's the heart. That's the heart, you see, that is so key there. If we're looking at the devastation of this world and we're not moved by the devastation, if we're looking at people who's in bondage and we're not moved by that, if we're looking at people who are spiritually blind and we're not moved by that, if we're not looking at the devastation of this world and our heart's not broken over that to where we're going to God and calling upon God to see the power of God manifest through us to minister them, then, beloved, we're not going to see that manifestation of the Spirit that we so desire. You know, I, and I began to think about that. I thought, you know, Luke 4.18 is a verse that they quite often we refer to over here. And in Luke 4.18 it says that Jesus was anointed. Jesus was anointed to minister to certain people, it says, in a, so, in a sense, to certain degrees of people, certain categories of people that are listed. It's the poor, the brokenhearted, the captives, the blind, and the bruised. The Holy Spirit anointed Jesus to minister to the poor. The Holy Spirit anointed Jesus to minister to the brokenhearted. The Holy Spirit anointed Jesus to, to minister to the captives. The Holy Spirit anointed Jesus to minister to the blind. The Holy Spirit anointed Jesus to minister to the bruised. The bruised there are people whose lives are totally shattered and devastated in the Greek language. You see, that anointing was upon Jesus to flow through Jesus to minister to those people. Now, if Jesus wouldn't have had the heart that he did, then the anointing wouldn't have flowed through him. God can anoint us today to, to minister to the poor, the brokenhearted, and the captives, and the blind, and, and the bruised. But if our heart's not there to go to them and allow the Spirit to flow through our heart, then that anointing's not going to flow through us, beloved. If we can be calling out to the gifts all we want, but if our heart's not there to minister to the broken, then the gifts are not going to flow through us to the broken. If our heart's not there to minister to the poor, then the gifts aren't going to flow through us to the poor. If our heart's not there to minister to the brokenhearted, then the, then yet the gifts aren't going to flow through us to minister to the brokenhearted, or to the captives, or to the blind, or to the bruised. You see, before we begin to call upon God for the move of the Holy Spirit, before we need to compel God for the gifts of the Spirit to be manifested in greater capacity, maybe we need to examine our hearts. Maybe we need to ask ourselves, is our heart in a place? Then we're going and we're compelled to go to the hurting. Are we, our heart compelled to go to the captives and the broken? Because that's what God's looking for to manifest the power of His Spirit. I remember years ago I heard a particular preacher talking about that he had been in a, in a, in a I forget what nation it was, but it was a nation that was very impoverished. And he went into what was their hospital and there was hardly anything there. There was just a bunch of people in a, in a ward that were there dying and they didn't have any pain medication or anything like we're used to here in the United States. And, and he, he, he talked about just walking through there to pray for people. The, the, how hideous it was to hear the cries of pain of people suffering and dying without any way to, to comfort them. And he left that hospital and he said, oh God, oh God. He just was heartbroken crying out to God. And God spoke to him and said, that's how I see planet Earth. That's how I see planet Earth in pain, in suffering, in broken, in captivity. Spiritually blind and in bondage. You see, beloved, our heart needs to be at the place to where we're broken. Then we can go to God and ask for the power to minister to the broken. But if we're asking for the power for any other reason, then I don't believe God's going to flow through us. The gifts of the Spirit aren't there to make us look good. The gifts of the Spirit aren't there to make us look powerful or mighty. The gifts of the Spirit are there to flow through a broken heart into a hurting world. And that's the part we've got to understand. There was a parable that Jesus taught. And in that particular parable, a friend comes to visit somebody and, and they don't have any bread. And it says that, you know, they realize they didn't have any bread. So they went to another friend and they begin to knock on the door and, and to call upon them. I've got a visitor, I've got a friend and I have no bread to give. 
And the woman said, go away, me and my kids are in bed. And it said, because of their importunity, because they kept pressing it, give me bread, give me bread, give me bread. Because of that, they rose up and gave them bread. And that's a parable that Jesus was actually teaching about prayer. And if you go into the verses in, in, in uh, Luke chapter 11, you'll find that he's dealing directly with the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, beloved, that importunity, when we realize there is a need out there in this world, there are broken people out there in this world, there are people in captivity and devastation, and you and I as human beings have no resources to minister to them, and then we go to God and cry out to God with a broken heart, God, I have no resources, I have no bread to give them, then God's going to impart the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to reach out to them and to minister to them, beloved, but first we have to have that heart that comes to that place of being broken for the world we live in. There was a man named John Lake that uh, had a quote. He says, Beloved, for the sake of a dying, suffering world, pay the price, get God's power, and set the prisoners free. You see what he was talking about? For the sake of a dying, suffering world, pay the price. Not for you, not for me, not for ministries to look good, us to look like a super Christian but so we can minister to a devastated world. Our heart has to be in that place before we see the manifestation of the power of God like we so desire. You see, there's some ifs in the kingdom of God. Hey, there's some ifs in the kingdom of God. One of the ifs is, you say, what do I do, pastor? What do I do, preacher? If that's not where my heart is. What do I do about it? 1 John 1, 9 is an if. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we stand before God today and we say, my heart's hard. If we stand before God today and say, you know what, I'm indifferent, I'm cold, I, I, I don't have that broken heart that you speak of. Then we need to get before God. And we need to lay it before Him and sin and say, Lord, my heart's not where it should be. I'm not, I, I'm not the man I should be. I'm not the woman I should be. I'm not, I'm not the vessel for you, God, that I should be. I walk among the suffering and, the, and, the, and those in bondage. And I walk among the heartache and the devastation of this world. And, I, and my heart seems to be untouched. That we need to get before God. You see, beloved, it's so important to understand that. That only God can change our heart. Only God can transform my heart. You know, one of the examples of this in the Bible that has always been so powerful to me is, is, is David. And he, to me, is one of the greatest examples of the blessing of repentance. And, and what I mean by that, we, we understand King David, and he had his time, most of us understand, with Bathsheba. He is a king when he observed Bathsheba, this woman apparently very beautiful, and then he wanted her sexually, and he called for her, and she came to him. He had that power as a king to do that. And then he was with her sexually, and then she contacted him a little bit later and said, you know, I'm pregnant. And to cover that up, he called her husband, who was in war for her at the time, back, hoping that he would go and be with his wife and that he could cover it up by everybody thinking that that was her husband's child. Well, he refused to go into her because he didn't want to go with her while his, his troops were out fighting. So David did continue to, to escalate his sin and he got that man intoxicated and tried to get him to lay with his wife then and again he didn't do it. So when David realized that those attempts had failed, he, he sent word back to the leaders in the battle to put Uriah in the front lines where they knew he would lose his life. And that's exactly what happened. And then God sent a prophet to David. And that prophet came to him with a parable. He talked about a rich man who had all these different sheep. And then there was a poor man who only had one lamb. And the rich man looks at the poor man and takes his lamb because he had coveted him. And the prophet said, David, what should I do about that man? And David said, you know, bring him to me. I'll deal with him. And the prophet then pointed his finger at David and says, David, you're the man. And David didn't realize what had taken place. And we understand that David repented. I mean, Psalm 51 is full of that repentance. And but we, there was great consequences as a, re a result of David's sin. God told him that the sword would never be removed from his house. There would always be a battle. God told him that his wives would lay with others in wide open space. God told him that that child would die but David prayed and he fasted and he called upon the Lord to, to spare that life's child and that child died. And you see then something amazing happened at the death of that child. David got up, he had been praying and fasting, he cleansed himself. 
And he went to the house of God and he worshiped God. You see, that's so very key. It's so very important to understand the power of repentance. You see, repentance didn't just overlook his sin. Repentance didn't just say, okay, David, you can keep going through the motions. Repentance brought David to the place in his heart where no matter what the consequences were, no matter what had happened as a result of his choices and his sin, he still could worship God. You see, beloved, that's true repentance. When I talk about the state of our heart and the hardness of our heart, if we come before God and we truly get before God and lay it before God as a repentance, the Spirit of God will move in our heart and the Spirit of God will move in our life and bring us to such a place that no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the situation is, we will stand before a holy God and worship Him. You see, God is calling you to repentance, not just so you can feel a little better. He's calling you to repentance back to that place of abiding in Him in worship and praise and glorifying Him. Beloved, that's why I'm encouraging you today. That as I share this message with you, I, I, I had a completely different teaching, but the Lord put on my heart to share this right way, to speak to you today. And I'm speaking to you now if the heart is hard. And you're wondering why the power is not there. If the heart is hard, and you're wondering why the gifts aren't manifest. If the heart is hard, and you're wondering why you're not seeing the glory of God, give before God in repentance today. And give before Him and confess the hardness of your heart. Confess the lukewarmness. Confess the coldness. And give before God until the Spirit of God comes upon on you and you enter to a place of worship that no matter what else is going on in your life, no matter what the situation no matter what the circumstances is you just simply begin to worship him and to worship him Psalm 51, he, God, David came before God, he says I acknowledge my transgressions Psalm 51 verse 4, he says against thee thee only have I sinned verse 7 he says God purge me, wash me verse 9 he says blot out my iniquities, verse 10 he says create in me a clean heart Renew a right spirit within me. True repentance brings you to the place of worship. No matter what else has happened. On the other side of the coin, if you say, you know what? The Spirit of God's moving on my heart today, but I, I'm just not going to listen. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Whoso confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. That mercy will lead you to worship. Confess your sins, forsake them, and enter into a beautiful place of worship today. Let us worship in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
the world. The world has nothing for thee. It has nothing to offer thee. I am the God that restores you. I can restore your household. I can take the broken pieces of your life and I can put them back together again. Trust in me, my children. Trust in me. Come before me this day. Come before me with praise. Come before me, shouting. Come before me and feel the joy that surrounds thee. Yes, my children, I am the one. I am the one that laid in thee. My Holy Spirit that dwells within thee shall guide and lead you through all things. In the world, you, there is darkness. In the world, you look around, there is darkness. But you must keep your, love, your eyes upon me because I am the light of this world. I am the light of this world. I give you all things. The things I give unto thee are good things. The things I give unto you shall not perish. They shall not perish, my children. Serve me. Serve me with your whole heart. Serve me with your whole mind. Let your mind have thoughts only of me. Let me come unto you, my children. Let me come in and sup with you. Open the door unto me. Open the door, I say unto thee. And we will sit and talk together. My children, I am the one that you pray to. I am the one that you sing songs to. I am the one that sees you in all places, in all things, in all times. I see you when you wake in the morning. I see you when you lie down at night in slumber. I know the thoughts that are going through your mind, and I say unto you, Yes, I am a he, I am alive, I am alive. And with me I say unto thee, There is blessings beyond blessing. There is blessings. Does any of you hurt? Are any of you hurting right now? Let me come and let me heal that broken heart. Let me restore unto you the things of salvation. Let me give unto you the things of back that which the enemy came in and robbed you. Yes, my children, let me restore your house this day. Believe in me, look upon me, ask of me, ask of me, ask of me, and ye surely shall be given that which you desire. I say unto thee again, I love you, my children, I love you. There is no other thing before me. There is no other God before me. There is no disease higher than my name. I can heal all things, I can heal all, the, all things, but beyond the things that I can give unto thee, I can give you a pure heart. I can put your heart back together again, that heart that was broken, that heart that was broken. I can take the pieces and I can place it back and restore unto you a new life. I can restore unto you a new way. I will restore unto you the joy that the enemy stole. Come unto me this day and trust in me. Trust in me, my children. Trust in me. For I give unto thee all that I have. I give unto thee all my love. I give unto thee without measure. I give unto you peace beyond measure. Look unto me, ask of me, believe that I shall give it, and I say unto you, this day I shall give unto thee, thou shalt receive thy blessings, thou shalt receive thy blessings.
praise God. The Bible tells us in Luke 6, 38, Give it, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom, for with the same measure that you meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. One of the great financial blessings of the Lord is we learn that as we give, we receive. As we give liberally, then we receive liberally. Bring in the harvest liberally. So we want to give you the opportunity to give into this ministry, to partner with us, to proclaim the whole counsel of God in the full power of the Holy Spirit. If you'd like to send in an offering, please send that to River of Life Church, 246 Derby Street, Pekin, Illinois, 61554, United States of America. Let me repeat that address. River of Life Church, 246 Derby, Pekin, Illinois, 61554, United States of America. God bless you.